Hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. So I think it's time to start. So maybe we can begin. Uh, so as the schedule is, uh, we're going to talk about uh, pluggable table access method. Uh, this presentation was originally scheduled to be presented by Hari Babu Komi, uh, but unfortunately, uh, he was not able to make it to this presentation. He had some personal things to take care of. So instead of him, uh, I'm going to present that. I'm Pankaj, and I'm colleague of Hari, so we are working together. So I'll just take care of the presentation that he has made. Just to break the ice, Hari Babu Komi is working with Fujitsu Australia Software Technologies. Overall, 11 years of experience, uh, out of which majority of the experience is in uh, in-memory and disk-based databases with the current organization or with the previous organization. And he's working with PostgreSQL ecosystem for around seven plus a year now, be it by fixing uh, the bugs, reviewing others' code, patches, contributing to various features. He's also involved into various other ecosystem of uh, Postgres. In one sample is like JDBC, where he's not very active in feature development, but uh, giving reviews or bug fixes or reporting issues or helping them resolving it. I'm Pankaj, who's going to present it. Uh, again, working for Fujitsu Australia Software Technology. Approximately 15 years of uh, technical experience in diverse domains, ranging from application to telecom. So relatively new in database world. Uh, however, leading uh, deliveries of Fujitsu Enterprise Postgres from Australia. Uh, my PostgreSQL experience is relatively less, just three plus years of experience. So comparative to all of you over here, I believe I'm rather novice. So uh, what, are going, what are we going to talk about? Uh, we are going to talk about the history of the development, why this particular thing came into picture, where it actually all started with, uh, how we identified the need for pluggable storage, who are the people behind it. So just want to give credit to it and a high level overview, what is pluggable table AM, why we are thinking not to use FDW, and what is supported in uh, PG12 as far as table AM is concerned. Uh, we'll also give a user end of view, like what are the new syntaxes. We'll also give a developer's end of view at a very high level, like what are the new APIs or what categories of the API have been introduced as part of table AM. Uh, what are the use cases? of pluggable AM where it can really be utilized, and what are the further development that we expect in pluggable AM. So history of the development is that the seed was actually sown by Alvaro, sitting with us. <laughs> so he started working on columnar storage uh, in approximately 2016. He gave a very invasive patch to make Postgres a columnar storage which was reviewed by community, but at the end of day, everybody agreed that we cannot just make it a columnar storage database. So either we go OLAP, either we are going OLAP way or we are going OLTP way, one way or the other, there are pros and cons. They cannot coexist perhaps together with that particular patch at least. Uh, historically, at the same time, Fujitsu who have their own columnar storage uh, wanted to deliver that particular thing to the community. So Hari Babu Komi was working from Fujitsu Australia. Uh, so when he got engaged uh, looking into the patches which Elvaro was delivering, he started working in that particular context as well. So that's where he got engaged with pluggable AM. Uh, with all these discussion, Robert Haas had uh, proposed that rather than to rewrite the storage layer completely, why don't we write a kind of access method that we have similar to index access method. Uh, that's the beginning of the pluggable AM. That's where the pluggable AM was initiated, conceived, and started. Post that, Andres, uh, Andre started looking into it. He poured in extensive efforts for the development, reviews, guidance, taking feedbacks from others, and then he was like spearheading this whole activity in the community. So to begin with, it was uh, Andre and Hari Babu Komi who started working on the patch. But this is not the end. So these are like the initiators who really thought about this particular area, uh, the need, uh, the patches, 
and so forth, but there are multiple people who have had worked on this particular patch from like last three years now. So this slide also signifies one of the thing which uh, maybe Amit Kapila was talking about yesterday that some of the patches don't go in like one or two months. Some of the patches may take years to come across. So if you see this particular page, it started in 2016, but it ended nearly in March 2019, approximately three years of development. So a lot of people got engaged. Uh, the next slide really talks about it, giving credits. So it's a big feature. Many people got in, uh, were involved in the completion of this feature, uh, which include Andre, Haribabu, Elvaro, Alexander, Dimitri, Ashutosh Bapat, Amit Khandekar, David Rolly. Uh, Haribabu Komi is actually a very humble person, so he didn't want it to hurt anyone. So he put and others in the last. <laughs> just to make sure that nobody get hurt, even if they have contributed a little. Uh, one of the thing that was uh, there, that draft pluggable table AM was being used by Zheap at the same time when the first uh, APA was exposed. So Andre was working along with Zheap as well. And he, at the same time, parallelly working on both the projects simultaneously, he identified the needs which a similar AM can need from a pluggable table AM methods. So that was coming as a feed into the pluggable table AM to identify what additionally we may need. So that was a kind of like sample project for us as well to identify various needs. So this was really like how it was going into development. At the same time, uh, not exactly in the same time, but if you see like very recently in the community, uh, Z heap, sorry, not Z heap, Z store has also been shared. Uh, we all are talking about it, uh, talking about column of storage, but it was coming at the last stages. So maybe that is why some of the needs which are there in the Z store is not really identified in the pluggable storage immediately. But yes, uh, teams are working on top of those requirements as well to make it even more user friendly, even more developer friendly uh, to make or let other table AMs come into the picture. So what is pluggable table access method? So as you can see the picture at a very high level till uh, PG 11, there was a pluggable access method for index to choose different index method, be it beat region or gist, but there was no similar method for the table AM. So there, from the developer's point of view, there is actually an interface layer written on top of index methods, which allows beat region gist to use those interfaces and allow developers to introduce new indexes as well. But for table, actually heap was the only one which was tightly coupled and integrated uh, inside the core. So there was no real separation of heap uh, as far as any interface is concerned. If you would have seen, uh, not sure many of us have seen, but there is a presentation by Andre as well, uh, where he identified how the architecture of uh, the whole core is, was tightly coupled along the heap. So that was also one of the trouble while uh, making this particular project possible, how we can separate the interface up on top of table to allow heap to work or use that particular interface. So the idea was to implement a storage access method, just like these indexes, uh, to allow different tuple storage mechanism. So that's what is being referred as pluggable table access method. So it exposes APIs facilitate, to facilitate any uh, developer to make a new AM altogether. So this is how the picture looks like now. So table AM exposes a new interface. Right now, by default, it is only heap, uh, but teams are working uh, on Z heap. There is a column of storage as well. We all know Z store, uh, but it is not there yet and the name is not finalized. There are discussions around that particular topic. So what it should be named. So that is why I've written just Colima. So there are many organizations that are working on implementing their own tuple storage on top of pluggable storage. So PG-13 will see definitely uh, new implementations of it. Any questions till now? So this is the new uh, changes, basically interface, uh, which has been exposed. 
So there are new uh, structures which allow you to hook new APIs or define your own APIs, which will then be used by the core to make use of the new AM. So it's like either you have heap, which has been registered for a particular table, or you can have a columnar uh, AM, which has been using those interface, like registered for those AMs, and then core will be using it. So, but we all know historically that uh, similar kind of things have been achieved uh, in past, like there is a column storage called C store. And in fact, I just Googled around and there was uh, something like click house uh, DB, FDW, something of that sort, which allows you to uh, have a column of storage. So question is really, uh, do we really need a pluggable table access method now when we could have achieved the similar things even with FDW. Uh, but the fact is that FDW is not intended for table AM kind of structure. FDW is really meant if your data is on a foreign server. So it is not meant to be used for local server. It is meant to be used when you have a data on a foreign server, which means that obviously uh, you will have some kind of performance penalties because there is a longer call stack. Uh, some of the functionalities like DDL modifications, et cetera, are not supported by FDW. So even that limitation will co uh, exist if we have any implementation achieving table AM sort of thing using FDW. So that is where FDW is not recommended to be used for table AM kind of structures or implementation. So looking at what click house uh, DB FDW defines, what they are really doing is that they are pushing the data out of your Postgres instance into a ClickHouse DB server where they maintain it in a columnar storage format. So that's how they are trying to achieve columnar storage. But question is really, do we, does it really make good sense now uh, when pluggable AM is there to push or start altogether a new instance to make your data in a columnar format? So this is where uh, now pluggable AM is coming into picture that there were hacks around uh, to make use of FDW and achieving different storage formats. But now with pluggable AM, those hacks are not really required. We can have our own AM, which is really plugged into your plug, uh, Postgres instance locally and achieving whatever we were achieving using FDW earlier with all, with the removal of limitations. Uh, which were there with FDW. So not FDW is the way to go uh, if we are implementing any new access methodologies or storage methodologies. Okay, so coming to the point, what is supported in V12 or version 12 of Postgres? So for, uh, tables are supported, so you can have your own storage mechanism, uh, storage AM on top of your tables. You can use uh, pluggable AM on top of your materialized view. Your index AM is not at all touched, so it will remain as it is, so no changes required for that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, one fact is that the storage, uh, the supported API is currently useful to create a row-based table storage. So now this is uh, really questionable. So this is what we believe, or this is what Hari Babu, who has implemented this, uh, believes, that it is good as far as the row tuple is concerned. It is not, sh we are not sure whether it is very good for columnar storage as well. So this is a contentional state, because there is a parallel implementation going for Z store as well, which is really columnar. Uh, but there are hacks around it. So that's where Z store is looking into it. Uh, they are looking into various other methodologies to maybe cache the information in their store, to use batching wherever possible. But what we believe down the line, maybe executor also need to be enhanced to make batching or vectorization possible. Uh, and some other minor improvements are also needed in pluggable AM to let uh, all these kind of areas opened up, which want to work on batching or which, we, uh, which they want to work on multiple tuples at the same time. So this is one improvement area that we are thinking as of now, uh, not there in V12, 
maybe in v13 it will be there any questions okay so i think i'm going really very fast <laughs> so let me know if i want to slow down from user perspective as simple as that there is a using clause new access method uh, in create table, in create table as, as well, there is a new access method, uh, create materialized view using new access method, where new access method is really being created using create extension. So this is a little more detail, but uh, at the end of day, uh, a user will just be doing a create extension and uh, let's say to create my own AM, and then we'll be using that my own AM while creating tables or while creating materialized view. So this signifies that every table, yeah, sorry, please. Uh, yeah, should be possible. Yeah, no limitation with that, as far as I understand. So, but, yeah. Uh, so his question, the temporary table, that's the temporary table. So what is the syntax of tem uh, temporary table, if I ask you? Okay. Uh, but you can create temporary tables, work tables, to store the next step of the work. Uh, I'll come to temporary table as well. Uh, not temporary table to be precise, but it opens up uh, all the areas. Uh, but if it is like any information that you're using, create table or create table as like using a query, it will be supported. But other syntaxes, even like alter table, is right now not supported. So. Coming back, uh, from the user end of view, uh, user point of view, he'll be doing a create extension. He may not be interested in create access method as such. These, uh, particular ex this particular uh, syntax might be getting used in the SQL of the extension itself. So he may not be really seeing it or he may not be even using it. So pretty much easy as far as end user is concerned. Not too much into intricacies of how it will work. So they, all they need is to specify which particular access method uh, is required. Using is a optional parameter, which means that if he doesn't specify, the default heap will be used for him. Uh, I forgot to update. There is a default uh, AM, some kind of GUC parameter as well, which allows you to specify that AM in like the startup itself, so that heap is not the default. So for example, if we are really a column or storage, OLAP kind of scenario, just want to push our data into the instance. So in that case, our uh, AM might be, let's say, ZStore. So all new tables, et cetera, will be using all, uh, ZStore in that case, not heap. So that is one of the usage scenario for that. Coming to the developer's view, uh, the most important structure it's a structure at the end of day. Uh, so if we really want to make a new AM for ourselves, this is the thing that we have to go for. Uh, sorry, some something missing. So table AM routine is a structure that we need to get. It is in SRC include access table AM dot H as far as I remember. Uh, but there is one important thing that I would like to point out uh, in this particular case. Uh, as I was mentioning that there is a lot of refactoring of the code which has been done around this particular area. Uh, earlier, heap was tightly coupled with the core which has been now separated out. Now, uh, committers are taking high precaution to make sure such kind of issues doesn't occur again in the future. So if you see the comments, what they have done, they don't want to get the code tightly coupled even with the table OAM routine. They don't want to use the structures at all. Uh, sorry. They don't want to use the structure members at all directly. So what they are doing is that they have made wrapper functions which abstract them to have the knowledge of the structure elements. So just in case in future they want to extend it, they can support the previous cases as it is by modifying the wrapper functions. So that is how they are trying to decouple everything as much as possible. Similarly, even the checker function, like whether all the necessary routines have been populated by newly 
uh, introduced AM, they just have a wrapper function so that zero coupling as far as the struct element is concerned. So this is, uh, I'm telling you because just in case if we start working towards the pluggable storage improvements, then we should keep on using these things to make sure that our patches get accepted rather very quickly. So I've not populated this structure. It's quite a big structure. There are approximately 38 APIs which have been introduced. Most of them are mandatory. Approximately only four uh, are not mandatory. Something like bulk insert or a bitmap. These APIs are not mandatory, but majority of them will be uh, necessary to implement. So that means if we want to implement a table AM, it is going to be a complex piece of code. It might not be as easy as like today's job to imp uh, implement a new AM. 10 different categories of API uh, in that table AM routine. So rather than going into 38 different, uh, different APIs, uh, we are categorizing those APIs into 10 different categories as such. Slot related callbacks, scan, related callbacks, palette table scan, index scan, something which is modifying the content, uh, something which is not really modifying it, like impacting the visibility, et cetera. DDL callbacks, there are few miscellaneous. Planner related callbacks and executor related callbacks. So in the end of day, like this structure is taking care of all the possible operations which a core can execute using either heap or a newly introduced AM. In fact, Heap is also implementing all these APIs. So just in case if we want to have a look, we can see the implementation of Heap as well to understand how these new AMs will really work. Okay, so now it really brings back us to understand what are the possible uh, implementations on top of the table AM structure. So one of them is alternative to heap, which is Zheap, we all know. There is column of storage, there are in-memory tables, index, organized tables, etc. So I think like all of us have heard about Zheap, right? Yeah, pretty much everyone. Zheap was originally scheduled to be coming uh, in PG12, but I think like there are other dependencies, which is pushing it down to PG-13, but it is currently in good progress. Provide better control over bloat using in-place updates and undo records for the delete. Uh, it also reduce write ap uh, amplification as compared to the heap and reduce tuple size by reducing tuple header. So if you see like complex piece of code written top on top of pluggable storage, as far as I remember, Zheap was originally not scheduled to be written on top of pluggable storage, but once it was started, once a draft API was available, Zheap was actually refactored to make use of a uh, pluggable API, pluggable table AM methods. Okay, so one last line important is current supported pluggable table access method meet basic need of Zheap, not all though. So uh, some of one of the need of uh, Zheap is that wall need to be extended to identify different wall type of record for Zheap, which currently is not there in the Postgres. It is a different project in itself. Uh, I guess Andre has identified that need and maybe down the line he'll be working on that. But pluggable table AM access itself doesn't really meet that kind of needs. So that is a separate project and will be worked to get, worked down the line. Another uh, popular table AM that we are already discussing in community is uh, Z store, quite popular one, I would say. Uh, getting actively developed, giving promising results. Uh, that is also possible on top of pluggable OM, uh, AM. It is using it heavily. Uh, so what it really means is uh, that the storage layout of the column uh, of the table is like columnar. So column wise instead of row wise. Fujitsu also had its own or has its own time-tested columnar tables support that both support read and write queries performance, thereby achieving OLAP and OLTP at the same time. However, it needed quite a lot of changes inside the core, even though it is written in form of uh, an extension. 
So, but now uh, Fujitsu is working towards making that uh, or refactoring that particular code fragment to write on top of pluggable AM to achieve all the benefit which OSS is giving. As I mentioned, like ZStore, which is currently under uh, development, is based on pluggable table AM. Uh, it supports columnar data using B3 index. Uh, the point is, the point that I'm making over here is that the implementation uh, is focused on the core problem now, rather than going inside the core or making changes to make a new AM accessible or you know possible. So that's a benefit of it. Even though we have been working with row-wise tuples right from the very beginning in Postgres, but now with pluggable API, it will be possible to have a columnar storage as well. One another thing uh, possible is in-memory table. Uh, MongoDB has uh, something called in-memory storage engine. We haven't thought of it as of now, uh, so far like in Postgres. Maybe thought, but maybe not. Uh, what it really means is that you can have a table which is there in the memory and is purged as soon as the server is restarted. So you can maintain a copy of the table data on the disk. So table AM is responsible for that only for durability, but that is not really done, I guess, in MongoDB. So another popular extension was, not popular, but uh, an enterprise uh, grade version or fork of Postgres has in-memory extension, uh, which uses FDW, but perhaps now it's the time to, uh, they can think of like rewriting it using uh, pluggable API table AM, which will reduce its code base and it will reap the benefit of the core and the more. Uh, one important point to note is that existing heap-like mechanism, sans buffer manager, will give in memory table AM, but it may need some additional capability to achieve syncing for persistence if required. So uh, in short, if you're writing a table AM, you can effectively copy heap, but don't write into buffer manager to make sure that it is not syncing with the disk. So that's, to begin with, is one of the input which we can use to make a such kind of like in-memory table. This is, uh, this is one point being written, index organized table, uh, which is more or less similar to include column support in Postgres. Uh, that is, your key column is there in the index, and the other columns, which are non-key columns, are stored along with the index. So when the tuple is really scanned, uh, you fetch it using the index, but you also include rest of the column, so you get performance benefits. So a new AM can be introduced, something on the similar lines. A possible implementation of ZStore, which is currently available, can be reused as it is uh, to achieve this. So use a B-tree index and use the keys as the, like, non-leaf elements, and the leaf element will contain not just the key, but also the data. So that is also possible, or index organized table. However, a word, word of caution, in uh, yesterday's presentation, Andre has shown that there are some possible issues if you want to go for index organized table. So maybe we need to go back and check before really start working anything on top of it. Any questions so far? No? Okay. So I think we have a lot of time. I'll be wrapping up very soon. <laughs> but uh, further development, uh, new API to share target list columns from the table during the select operation. So the specified columns can only be returned. So this is one of the need from the columnar storage as well, that even though they have implementation to store all columns, but the selection of the data can perhaps be optimized if they know what particular columns are needed uh, by the query. So this is currently not supported by object storage uh, or like table EM methods. So when they request for a scan, they don't share this information, what columns have been requested to be scanned or what particular information is required in that particular select statement. So this is something that even Fujitsu has identified as a need. Uh, they were proposing a patch as well. And even ZStore need this particular change.
but unfortunately uh, I think like in PG 12 obviously it is not possible now, but in 13 it might be available. So now Z store team is speculating like how this particular thing can be achieved, uh, but immediately yes, this is one of the limitation of table AM. Again, there is no mechanism as of now that if you have defined a create table command with a particular table uh, AM method populated all the data in that particular table, you cannot just go ahead and change uh, using alter table command. You cannot say okay, earlier it was heap, now make it Z heap or make it table AM, new table AM or anything of that sort. So alter table syntax is not currently supported. So this is something that need to be supported down the line. Uh, giving inputs to the planner as far as the cost is concerned, that's yet another change uh, which is expected in pluggable uh, table AM methods, uh, not yet there. Couple of important things that uh, we are seeking to start working upon is executor batching and executor vectorization. So if we go and read the blog of Elvero, uh, he actually identified all the possible projects which will be required to be undertaken to help achieve the performance gains as far as columnar storage is concerned. So executor batching and executor vectorization was one such project. Uh, I believe that the reason is that SIMD kind of uh, performance gains or columnar storage performance gains will be more if executor can work in batches or can do a vectorization of its you know, tuple fetching mechanism or sharing. As of now, executor is not made in that particular fashion. Uh, we have had a discussion with Andre, but it needs rather more work. It's not something that can be jumped upon immediately. So this is one thing that we would like to work upon down the line. So once it is there, maybe the performance gains will be even more as compared to what we see right now. That's it from my side. Any questions, anything that I can help with? So I think like uh, anyone who want to uh, work upon table AM, then the best thing is to have a look at heap because uh, that implements pretty much everything. So. Uh, it uses all the table A methods, all of them, and uh, can be used as a sample to understand how it is working. If you want to make rather more experimental table A method, then uh, Z store patch can also be analyzed on how uh, it is making use of those APIs, how B tree index has been implemented. So that's also a good study point. Any question, anything? All good then, maybe we can wrap, thank you.